So tonight I really don't have a lot to report on. Um, I mean, the, the big stories that you don't hear anything about was uh, China's proposed uh, peace treaty uh, was rejected. Um, I mean, out of hand. They didn't even. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think anybody in the West even uh, read it, uh, as far as I know. Um, I haven't seen anything anywhere. Certainly not on mainstream media. Uh, what was in the peace treaty? You tell me. I have no freaking idea. Maybe it was just uh, an outrageous. Uh, I, you know, and the, always the big news of the day doesn't get reported on. It just blows my mind. Uh, and so, Elon Musk came out. I don't know what, you know what, I, I love the guy. I, I love the guy, uh, I, and he might be an evil son of a gun, who knows, but he outed uh, Victoria Nuland, the, the, the spider behind everything that's taken place since 2014. Let's just watch this brief one-minute video. I want to ask you a, a, a personal question. You have been in the news, or at least the, the Twitter sphere, in the last 24 hours. Elon Musk the owner of Twitter, uh, tweeted yesterday in response to some discussions uh, about you, and I'm quoting here, nobody is pushing this war more than Newland. And I'd like to ask your reaction. Well, I would start with uh, a basic fact here, which I'm confident is well known, which is if this war is to end, it could end tomorrow if Vladimir Putin Choose, chose to end it and to withdraw his troops. Uh, so this is this is not about us. This is about choices that Vladimir Putin has made um, to try to bite off pieces of his neighbor. And if we allow this as the United States, if we don't support the victim in this aggression, then this aggression will be replicated all over the planet in the years to come. And you know, uh, particularly folks with young children ought to be thinking about the future that they want to live in. So what's bizarre to me is, uh, I mean, is she some weird uh, uh, god or a satanic figure that just, I mean, her influence over ev all of the events that have taken place in probably the last year since 2014 has been, I mean, incredible. And uh, so... Who the hell is she? Why is she in charge of everything? I mean, you know, and, and she's been the spider behind the scene, and Elon Musk just outed it. I mean, that that was huge uh, today. Uh, by the way, let's uh, let's get into. Um, I wanted to space these between because uh, I am starting to get some good comments on my videos, and by the way, these disappear. They disappear, and so I apologize that if I don't respond to your comments or read them on my videos. Um, so uh, here's one. Uh, it says, I stopped listening after two minutes. You just know it's going to be full of lies. And I think that was the uh, uh, um, that was the, the Why Russia Invaded Ukraine video on uh, Putin explaining uh, why he felt his country had to invade Ukraine. And I'm sorry this individual didn't want to open their mind and, uh, and see maybe another side to the story. Who knows? Who knows? Um, let's get to the next comment. Um, it says, you said we need to put together a peace treaty. These four treaties were broken when Russia invaded Ukraine. The 94 Budapest Memorandum giving Ukraine sovereignty. The 97 Bilateral Freedom and Friendship Treaty recognizing Ukraine's borders and territories. The Minsk 1 and Minsk 2 stating their are Treat of Colonel Gerk G I R K troops and Wagner troops. Well, yeah, okay, I can kind of go along with with that comment, but at the same time, uh, don't you think that that uh, NATO uh, violated the Minsk agreements by uh, continuing to arm Ukraine and 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 build up their military since 2014? And I showed a video on the violent coup that took place there. I, you know, I'm good. I, I'm, you know, I'm all good. I just, I'm not, no, I've got no bone in this game and I want to look at both sides. I try to keep an open mind. Um, so let's see. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was an interesting one. I, I'm not going to play it. Uh, by the way. Oh yeah, this one. Definitely. 
I'm putting this one on one minute and nine seconds because I think that this is really weird and I didn't know this was going on. So this is an integral ceremony between the Russian, Chinese, and South African military. <laughs> Безусловно, стало знаковым событием, подтверждающий высокий уровень сотрудничества между нашими странами. Данный факт говорит о нашей глубокой заинтересованности в укреплении военно-морского сотрудничества, направленного на обеспечение безопасности в мировом океане и противодействие новым угрозам на море. Народной освободительной армии Китая. Flag officer fleet, South African Navy, commanding officers, officers. So, I mean, it just seems kind of weird. Am I, am I mistaken that South Africa is now part of the Russian, Chinese, uh, India uh, alliance <laughs> against, against NATO and the uh, West or the United States? I don't know. I mean, what do you make of that video? Uh, you tell me. Put it in the comments below. I I, I just speculate on these things. Uh, and uh, dang on it, I hit the wrong button on my phone. So it's going to come down to the next comment. Well, let's um, uh, let's get back into the news for just one second. So yesterday I told you that uh, Russia was going to pound. Uh, on the anniversary of the war, they were going to launch a major missile strike. Well, guess what? That cybersecurity guy, you were right. They pounded the shit out of Ukraine today. I got no um, uh, video, I've got nothing on, on what the results of that uh, massive military uh, missile strike uh, uh, did. Uh, now, we're going to get into the Russian numbers, because uh, I'm going to run those today. Uh, and I know that most people don't want to watch these things. Let's get to the next comment. I, I thought, well, well, you know what, I've, I've been talking enough. Let's get to the next video. Um, uh, let's see. What's this one? Yeah, that's 59 seconds. So what's, let's watch this one. Mm-hmm. 由美国发起的战斗约百分之八十。美国也是侵犯别国主权，干涉别国内政最多的国家。据报道，二战结束以来，美国试图推翻五十多个外国政府，粗暴干涉至少三十个国家的选举，试图暗杀五十余位外国领
Um, so let's get to the next uh, next video here. You know, I'm sorry, I just didn't have much news today, other than I was right about the missile strike. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> we got to watch two. I'm not going to play all six six minutes and six seconds of this. This is a Russian parody on Zelensky. I I got to tell you, I was freaking laughing my i watched the whole thing but i won't torture you with that i, I just thought man i tell you the russians have a good sense of humor watch this <laughs> who is this i can he's a i guess a Zelensky look-alike that they have in russia now <laughs> it's just hilarious so what I, I have no idea what this means i mean it's just <laughs> It's just bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> what the hell is this about? I was just laughing my ass off watching it. Well, look at these in a leopard suit. Because <laughs> they're leopard tanks, right? Oh, my God. The, the Russian sets of humor. And look at the old computers. I, you know, I mean, this is... I don't know what the symbolism of that is. Look at it filling the guy's head. <laughs> oh my god! I, I tell you what, I love or hate, love or hate the Russians. I love their sense of humor. Oh my goodness! All right, I won't torture you with any more of that. Uh, uh, this is I, I won't play this video. Um, this is a Russian. I mean, a Ukrainian. Well, he's been in, in Poland for a number of years, and uh, he was saying that they're talking about deporting him uh this is only 17 seconds uh you know russian propaganda right i don't know i mean you tell me i mean this is uh i will watch this one and then i'll get into the next comment on my channel all right, so let's get the next comment on the channel. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Okay, got it. Okay, this is a... Okay, you say, looks like Ukraine's air defenses are pretty wrecked. Um... I don't know who this publication is. You can form published this February 22nd article titled Ukraine's Air Force Launches 10 Strikes on the Enemy. Okay. Well, good. Uh, let's get to the next next comment. Uh, so we'll see. Um, Gorbachev said that the subject of enlargement, in fact, never came up in the 1989 or 1990. The topic of NATO expansion was never discussed. It was not raised in those years. I am saying this with a full sense of responsibility. Not a single Eastern European country brought up the issue. Not even after the Warsaw Pact ceased to exist in 1991. He told the newspaper, and boy, I'll tell you, I'll just spell it for you, K-O-M-M-E-R. S-A-N-T in October 2014. Thank you for the comment. Uh, well, let's read more. Right, let's see. Read more. Well, that's it. Okay, so that's it for that comment. All right, so let's get on to the... the oh, man, I tell you, this this is... You want to talk great Russian propaganda. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the best. And you know what? I mean, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I kind of on the side of the Russian propaganda in this thing. Democratic countries actually don't invade their neighbors. Democratic countries don't harbor terrorists. Uh, democratic countries don't use weapons of mass destruction. Don't invade. 
that was huge and uh boy i tell you the uh if you want to, to ever go back through history and uh witness the warmongering neocons like uh, condoleezza rice uh george bush john mccain uh, i mean i think of course he's dead now um man i tell you it's uh it's a uh, the, 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 whoever put together that little uh, montage uh geez i mean give them credit I won't. I won't show you this one. Malcolm X's daughter sues the FBI and, and CIA over her father's assassination. Uh, who knows? Uh, this was a really weird video. Elon tweeted. Uh, so no. Uh, oh, well, that's done. I'm not going to show you that one. Oh, this is this is an interesting one. Uh, so here we go. Let's watch this one. Well, the point of that was, um, I guess they were just seeing what the guy was. Uh, anyway, if you if you don't know the history, uh, Banderas, uh, he was a Nazi, um, basically worse than Hitler, uh, killed a hell of a lot of people. So let's get uh, let's get to the next comment. Let's get to the next comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Zelensky has said he would stay neutral, but that didn't stop Putin from invading Ukraine. Article published by the Independent titled "Does Zelensky Concede Ukraine Will Not Join NATO." It's a truth, and it must be recognized, says Ukraine leader Zelensky has said Ukraine should accept it will not become a member of NATO, hinting at a potential key concession to Russia, which demanded such a guarantee uh, before launching this deadly invasion. Okay. Good comment. So, um, appreciate all these. I think that... Uh, you know, let's 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 try to seek the gray area in between of everything. Uh, boy, I tell you, lots of comments. Um, so, and and by the way, these are pretty um, intellectual comments. I then you know, and then, you know, like that that stupid one. I I cut it off after twenty seconds. Uh, you know, watching it. Well, guess what? I mean, you know, are you going to open your mind? You're going to consider. Uh, the gray areas in between, try to find the truth. I mean, that's what my channel is all about. Uh, and this was a weird uh, video where Putin talked about some crazy story where a woman gave him a note. And <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I guess he was trying to present a human side of himself. Um, oh, this. Yeah, this is very moving. Um, I don't know. If, if you know, all soldiers, uh, they co get caught up in war. I mean, fighting for good or evil. Uh, depending on however you want to look at it, uh, we all uh, we're all the same. So let's just watch this one. I, I I hope this moves your heart. It certainly moved mine. It almost brought me to tears. Yeah. Я знаю, что нелегко сейчас. 
то надо, надо ему в долг отомстить за слезы матерей, за слезы детей, за разрушенные города, дома, семьи и другое. Хочу пожелать тебе только твоем родном, твоего успехов и только и побед. А мы тогда с бабушками, ветеранами будем помогать вам стать больше. Желаем скорейшей победы, чтобы на нашей земле посадился и мир. Крепкого здоровья, возвращайся живи. Выйди. Нет, сообщение твое принял. Фу, слова сильные. Спасибо тебе большое за такие слова. Победа обязательно будет за нами. Anyway, that uh, that touched my soul, and I wanted to get into the next comment. Because uh, I tell you, I'm I'm getting some incredible uh, uh, feedback, and uh, and by the way, you know I reported stupidly on the flamethrower, and and, uh, and so this is uh, this is huge, and uh, and I, I I'll, well, I'll give my commentary on this comment after I'm done reading it. So Forbes article, February 18th, titled "When Russian Troops Got Stuck in a Minefield Near." Vlog Lamar, they deployed a flamethrower. And, and, you know, I've shown you videos on what the flamethrower is. It's just, well, it's a missile. It's a bunker-busting missile system uh, that the, the Russians have brought up. I I don't know. I mean, I don't know the history of it. I, it, it seems to me like it's new technology. Um, flamethrower rocket launcher, and yeah, that's what it is. The Ukrainians blew it up, according to this comment. The Ukrainian Army's 72nd Mechanized Brigade struck a TOS-1A uh, outside Vogladar. As Ukrainian cameras recorded from the sky and the ground, the Russian launcher burst uh, like a giant firework. In just one bloody chaotic day two weeks ago, the Russians lost 30 or more armored... Uh, well, and we saw a video of this, and I put that up on my channel. Uh, yeah, and, and for sure, I, I, I can verify what this person is saying. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, whoever this is that's giving me the comments, I won't tell you uh, his channel or, or his name. Uh, he says the Russians, um, the losses, uh, well, 30 or more armored vehicles around Vagladore. Yes, yes, definitely. That is true. Uh, verified by multiple sources. So uh, thank you. For your comment their losses and that's why i'm reading these comments because i consider this a very informed individual whoever this is and uh and so keep them coming the losses only uh deepened in the following days the russians have deployed at least three uh brigades around Vagladar, and it seems two of them the 40th and the 155th naval entry brigades are on the edge of combat ineffectiveness i i can't verify that but uh it, it could be true i mean you know all i see is uh, I, it's hard for me to find any news on the western side because all i get is cbs MB, msdnc uh abc fox news i mean you you know where where do you go to find out the information from the other side uh, and of course the ukrainians lie about everything so you know yeah so this, i where this person's getting his information from i appreciate it man i tell you this is the, the, but so it could be that the russians are having some very big difficulties and it, it just you know like i said I'm, I'm just getting my news from the russian side for the most part all right so let's keep going um and I, this is a great great uh, uh well i'm person sounds very informed uh, let's see the 40th and 150 are on the end Oh, it, combat uh, Ukrainian mines and by the way I've talked about the mines I told you that since 2014 up until uh, 2023 almost I mean the Ukrainians have been building these def massive defensive positions that are just I mean I uh, the Russians have had to navigate their way through them and and it's it's very costly 
Uh, holy moly. I mean, I can't, I mean, million minds, probably my multiple millions of minds. Uh, it's just, it's just insane. But anyway, so Ukrainian mines buried along the main approaches to Vagladar and also scattered uh, from above by special American-made artillery shells. And by the way, yeah, if you ever seen those uh, cluster bombs when I was in the military, you, 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 I mean, it's kind of like in the movies, you know, you shoot them up and then all these mines come out. So, yeah, I'm sure they have inflicted uh, many casualties. So that's what he points out. Uh, but for the Russians, merely crossing the minefield isn't enough. On the far side of the mines, the Ukrainians have dug earthworks and built bunkers. So... Whoever this person is, I mean, good God, I totally agree with you on everything that you're saying here. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I can't believe the Russians have been able to advance as far as they have. <laughs> I mean, working your way through these minefields and the cluster bombs and, and everything else and, the, and all the, the military that the NATO has provided. I mean, we built up Ukraine to be, I mean, you know, if Ukraine had been smart, really, I mean, I, and I, I'm, this is sarcastic. I mean, I just don't want you to, to take this the wrong way. They should have marched south and taken over Europe and uh, and just robbed everybody in Europe because nobody in Europe could have stood against this army. You know, what we what we engineered was two titans to go up against each other, uh, you know, Ukraine and Russia, and, 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 and somehow engineered them to fight each other. Uh, you know, we, we there are two bears going against each other. And, and, and if the two bears had just kind of thought about things and said, you know what, we got, we got everything we need to just take Europe and it'll be an easy fight. <laughs> I mean, they, could, they could have just marched south all the way to uh, Italy and, uh, and, and nothing would have stood in their way. I mean, they, you know, it, if they had formed an alliance, uh, but uh, somehow, um, anyway, the Western nations uh, put the proper people in power and uh, and made these two titans fight against each other. So thank you for the comments. So let's get back to, uh, oops, damn it. Oh, man, I lost, uh, there we go. thought I lost my comments. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, let's get to the next uh, video here. Boy, this is a long video, huh? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, this is uh, Russia saying this is what it looks like in Ukraine with their recruitment. crazy huh I know I wouldn't want to be getting in that van yeah is this Russian propaganda I don't know but that's what the Russians are showing as the uh, Ukrainian recruitment um Well, let's let's watch this one. I, I'm sorry. Hold on. I don't remember what this was about. Let's see. Yeah, okay, Britain news tonight of a plane crash in Little Rock, Arkansas. Just minutes ago, we learned the people on board were actually headed here to Northeast Ohio to help clean up the Oakwood Village explosion from Monday. All five people on board worked for an environmental consulting firm. The plane took off from the Clinton National Airport around noon and was headed for John Glenn Columbus International Airport. Right now we are digging into the story. We'll have much more on air and online as soon as we learn it. Boy, isn't it amazing how we get more from Russian television than we get? I hadn't heard anything about that, had you? I mean, I don't know. I, I just kind of clicked on that one because I was like, well, wait a minute, what the hell is that about? All right, so I'm just trying to get down to the Russian... Uh, Okay, uh, well, let's watch this one. This this is probably a NATO spin, you know, got to present both sides of the equation here, right? I mean, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a Putin-loving uh, uh, warmongerist, uh, you know, from the uh, other side. Uh, let's, let's see what, uh, what this person has to say, because I'm sure that this is a NATO uh, 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 person that says we need to go to war with China, Russia, and 80% of the world. Also we, we haven't seen uh, any uh, supplies of uh, lethal aid from China to Russia, uh, but we have seen signs that they are considering uh, and maybe planning for that. And that's the reason why uh, the United States and other allies have been very clear uh, warning against that. China is a member of the UN Security Council and, and 
and uh, Russia's war aggression against uh, Ukraine is a violation of the UN Charter. Uh, the basic principle of that Charter is to respect uh, the uh, integrity uh, of uh, all the nations and not to march in and invade another country with hundreds of thousands of, of, uh, of troops. And of course, China should not be part of that. We don't know when the war will end, uh, but what we do know is that uh, when the war ends, we need to ensure that history doesn't repeat itself. Uh, this is part of a pattern, uh, Georgia 2008, uh, Donbass, Crimea 2014, uh, and then the full-fledged invasion uh, last year. We need to uh, ensure that, uh, that, uh, uh, that um, um, we break uh, the, the, the cycle of Russian uh, aggression. Well, there you go. All right, so we're going to get into the Russian numbers, and that'll end this video. And uh, boy, one last long comment from this uh, uh, incredibly informed individual. Um, and you know, I, 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 I'm not sure I can read this whole damn thing. <laughs> this video is getting pretty damn long. All right, so the USR was never offered a formal guarantee of the limits of the NATO expansion post 1990. Well, okay, if they weren't offered a formal uh, agreement, well, don't you think it? would have been a good idea not to do it <laughs> you know, I, mean, I mean you might point out that okay well it wasn't in the agreement i mean but anyway let's just keep going so moscow merely distorts history to help preserve its any western consensus at home well certainly I'm, i agree with that uh, for many cold war scholars the uh, genesis of the narrative can't be primarily uh, traced back to february of 1990 visited by james bacar U.S. Secretary of State under President George Bush to Moscow, where Bakar met with the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev. Um, the Berlin Wall had come down three months earlier, and the Western leaders were openly uh, discussing whether a divided Germany would be reunified and something in Moscow feared. And, and, and if that had, well, they, they should have feared it. <laughs> I mean, my God, Russia is sending leopard tanks to Ukraine. Holy shit, the Nazis are back, huh? Uh, don't you think that uh, I, I, I certainly can understand their uh, uh, apprehension on these uh, these sentiments, but let's just keep going. At no point in the discussion did either Bakar or Gorbachev bring up the question of the possible expansion of NATO membership to other Warsaw Pact countries beyond Germany, according to Mark Kammer, director of the Cold War Studies Project at Harvard University's David center who retrieved the declassified transcripts and other materials indeed it never would have occurred to them to raise an issue that was not on the agenda anywhere not in washington not in moscow not in any warsaw pack or nato capital kramer wrote in an april 20, 2009 journal article okay well you know what i i you're obviously a very intellectual individual and i god knows i worship what you're writing here but don't you think that NATO expansion uh, up to the borders of of Russia might be something that they might worry about? <laughs> I, mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. I mean, I, I, I sometimes the intellectual mind is into the intellectual stuff, but they don't see where you know uh, a nation state might think that they're threatened and and how they might lash out. You know, uh, that's all I got to say. Let's. Let, um let's let's finish reading this uh uh so let, we're going to get to the russian numbers and that'll be the end of the video so gorbachev met with western german chancellor Hel helmut boy i tell you who is this person he's amazing helmut kohl k-o-h-l the day after the meeting with uh bakar according to kramer's research the subject of german unification was more prominent on the agenda than it had been with Baker, Gorbachev did not seek any assurances about NATO enlargement and certainly did not receive any Kramer up. So there you go. That's the last uh, comment that I'll read today. Uh, we are done with the comments on my channel. Good news. Uh, and then, you know, I, did I go out and do my own due diligence and research all his comments? Uh, no, I, I assume the guy sounds like he's done his own research. Uh, you, you form your own opinion. That's the point of my channel. You know, there's gray areas in between on both sides. Uh, I, you know, I just appreciate the guy sending me all of that. And, you know, I, I try to inject my little bit of uh, mental uh, uh, stuff in there. Uh, I'm trying to find the numbers. Um, 
daggone it. Because, you know, I want to keep showing you <laughs> other videos. And we, 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 we did this one uh, previously. Daggone it, where's the Russian numbers? All right, so hold on. Here we go. Well, this is as of the 23rd of February. Well, maybe they haven't published the 24th February. All right, so let's just do these. Three minutes, 20 seconds, and then we're done. The armed forces of the Russian Federation continue as a special military operation in the Kupiansk direction. The attacks launched by army aviation and the artillery of the Zapad group of forces have resulted in the neutralization of the enemy manpower near Krokmalnoye, Veshanoye, Berestavoye of Kharkov region and Novoselovskoye of Lugansk People's Republic. The enemy has lost up to 55 Ukrainian personnel, two pickups and one D-20 howitzer. In the Krasny Levan direction, the active operations of the center group of forces, as well as the attacks launched by aviation, artillery and heavy flamethrower systems have resulted in the neutralization of the manpower and military equipment of the armed forces of Ukraine near Yampolovka of Donetsk People's Republic, Stelmakhovka and Chervona Adibrova of Lugansk People's Republic. About 85 Ukrainian personnel, one infantry fighting vehicle, two armed fighting vehicles, one Gvozdika self-propelled howitzer and one D-30 howitzer have been eliminated. In the Donetsk direction, the offensive operations of volunteers from the assault detachments, supported by the units of the airborne troops formation from Pskov, as well as the attacks launched by aviation and the artillery of the U group of forces, have resulted in the elimination of over 210 Ukrainian personnel, six armored fighting vehicles, four motor vehicles, one Gruat multiple launch rocket system, and one D-20 howitzer. One Ukrainian ordnance depot has been destroyed near Avdiivka of Donetsk People's Republic. In the South Donetsk direction, operational tactical aviation and the artillery of the Vostok group of forces have launched a complex fire attack against the Ukrainian units near Vodinoye, Uglidar, Dobrovoye in Donetsk People's Republic and Uglesboroshnaya railway station. The enemy has lost up to 105 Ukrainian personnel, one tank, two infantry fighting vehicles, three armored fighting vehicles, as well as Unstar B, D-20 and D-30 howitzers. Six Ukrainian ordnance depots have been destroyed near Razdolnoye, Bogatyr, Uglidar, Razliv, Vodinoye of Donetsk People's Republic and Uglesvoroshnaya railway station. In the Kherson direction, the counter-battery warfare operations have resulted in the destruction of two Mstabi howitzers and one D-30 howitzer. Missile troops and artillery of the armed forces of the Russian Federation have neutralized 97 artillery units at their firearm positions, as well as the manpower and military equipment in 128 areas. 135D6 low altitude aerial target detector has been destroyed near Krasnoye in Donetsk People's Republic. Air defense facilities have shot down one Su-25 airplane of the Ukrainian Air Force near Kizamis in Kherson region. Nine unmanned aerial vehicles have been destroyed near Zhovnivoye of Kharkov region, Karamzinovka, Privolye, Rubezhnoye, Shenichnoye of Lugansk People's Republic, Yegorovka, Peromaiskoye, Novandreevka in Donetsk People's Republic and Pologi in Zaporozhye region. In total, 387 airplanes, 210 helicopters. I always read these numbers myself. Uh, 387 airplanes, 210 helicopters. You know, the helicopter number hasn't really gone up. I, I guess that we're not providing Apache helicopters to Ukraine. Um, maybe they just don't have the pilots to fly them, or maybe we don't have Americans that want to go over there and fly the helicopters for Ukraine. Uh, who knows? So 3,200, that number keeps going up, air, aerial vehicles, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, 420, 405 air defense missile systems, uh, wonder how many of those were balloons <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't know i mean that was a previous video that i, I, I talked about how they're putting balloons over there uh s look at this number holy shit seven thousand that, that's gone up that's gone up huge uh seven thousand nine hundred and ninety four tanks and other armored uh, fighting vehicles oh my man one thousand and thirty eight uh, multiple rock rocket launchers uh wow that's another big number uh, that's gone up. Uh, 4,189 field artillery cannons and mortars, and then uh, 8,501 special military motor vehicles as of February 23rd. We don't have the February 24th numbers. We don't know, excuse me, what the uh, devastating impact of the uh, huge huge missile strike that took place uh, took place today as i predicted on uh, february 24th across ukraine because uh, russia wanted to uh, send a signal 
that uh, the war is uh, is not over, and uh, they are going to obliterate uh, NATO, Ukraine, and uh, and all of the uh, Western weapons that exist uh, on their border. And I can't blame them in a certain respect. I don't think as an American I would want those weapons on my border of the United States. Uh, you know, all we have is a few drug cartels and uh, a bunch of uh, fentanyl pouring across the border because of the Democrats. Uh, uh, at least we don't have uh, huge, huge weapon systems with high Mars missiles and everything capable of striking cities in the United States uh, right on our border. So you tell me and leave a comment below. And I'll tell you what, we got some good comments, didn't we? Whoever this individual was, uh, I appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. Peace out, stay free, and it's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.